Hello and welcome to the 6th edition of the Goa Arts and Literature Festival. Today here we have with us Naomi Lugit. Hello. Hello. Um, she's a food writer and a photographer. Um, is this your first time here? It's my first time at the festival, yes. What are you expecting from this festival today? Well, I've been here a couple of days in Goa and I've been meeting <coughs> people and so I think it's just going to get even more intense than it has been already, full of conversation and new ideas and meeting new people. It's great. Um, I understand that you passed out from law school. Yes. You were a lawyer. I was a lawyer. Yes. And then you shifted it's a confession to confession. You're making me make it. Yes. And then and then you shifted to food writing, right? Well, what I did was I left the law. Um, I liked it a lot, but I wanted to do something else. And then it, things evolved, and that's what I ended up doing. What What sparked your passion for food? I think it's not really. Hmm. It's not that I started out thinking food was the thing I wanted to do. It, I wanted to understand how things worked in other places in the world, and food is a way of understanding other cultures and other places. So it's that way around. You've written five books, five, I think six books with Jeffrey Alfred, That's right? right? Yeah. yeah and my, I, my ex-husband. Yeah, yeah, and I understood you have won nine awards or so? I don't know, however many. They've, each of them have won at least one award, and some of them won more than one, yes. Yeah, and each book was about different cuisines, right? Well, some of them are about a subject. So, well, the first one was about <coughs> flatbreads, and the next about rice and rice eating traditions around the world. So it wasn't geographically specific. It moved in different chapters for different places: Senegal, uh, the Indian subcontinent, you know, different places. And then um, one was about <coughs> traditional home baking all around the world. But then there's a book about the Indian subcontinent, including. Um, Nepal and Sri Lanka, Bangladesh and Pakistan, as well as India, and it's it's regional. It's just looking at a series of regionals. It's not organized by region. It's organized from you know there's a chapter on dals, and so there's a there's a Sri Lankan one, and you know several different regional dals. One from Nepal, for example. Um, so that's called <coughs> mango and curry leaves, and then a book called hot sour salty sweet, which is about mainland Southeast Asia and a book called Beyond the Great Wall, which is about the areas of China outside Han China, so the, the non-Han peoples in China, which is a small number, but a real diversity of cultures. So Tibetans and Uyghurs and Kazakhs and Kyrgyz and all kinds of people. Um, and then, I, then I've done one book on my own called Burma, Rivers of Flavor. Mm -hmm. yes, yeah. yeah. So that is kind of fun. I mean, Was that really specifically on Burmese food? Uh, no, I would say it's on food uh, of people who live in Burma, and some of them are Bamar, Central Burmese, and then there's Kachin people and Shan people. There's different peoples in Burma, and um, so it's some. Of, it includes the foods of some of the uh, uh, the non-Central Burmese people as well. Yeah. What do you try to bring out from your books, mainly? Well, I'm interested in home cooking. And what I'm doing all of that because home cooking is the best expression of what happens every day. And it's the thing that's being done every day creatively by home cooks. It's what everybody's eating, if they're lucky. And also, it's a way, if I, I'm sort of like trying to be a bridge so that people in Canada and the States, say, who are the most of the readers of the books, they get an idea of another place by reading the stories, by looking at the photographs, and then maybe by thinking, oh, I can make that recipe, that's interesting, let me try that. And then that makes a connection between them. And I think a food connection is also a, a bit of a heart connection. You know, it's an empathetic connection and it makes them curious and so makes them curious about the place. Maybe they start to pay attention to the news. Instead of thinking about that place as foreign and, oh, that's different or that's weird or who knows about those people. Instead, oh, they, they, they have a personal connection. And for me, that's, that's why I do what I do. Yeah, and um, next year, you'll be releasing a book called The Taste of Persia. Yes. Can you tell us a little about, a little about it? Well, Taste of Persia. Persia is, a, you know, is an old word for, uh, for the country Iran, but also, of course, a culture that spread much further than Iran, came to the subcontinent with the Parsis and also with the Mughals. Um, but, um, but this book is, is really about Iran and the region immediately around that's been most in directly influenced and had cross connections in the kitchen as well as in the battlefield um, with, uh, with Persian culture. So it's the countries, countries of the Caucasus. So that's Georgia, Armenia, Azerbaijan. They're right next door. And then 
Kurdistan, which is the part of Iraq right along the, right along the Iranian border, and, and then Iran. So uh, if the food is really interesting and, and the cross connections are really interesting. You know, it's, uh, each place has its distinctive cuisine and yet you can see the relationship between them, you know. What are, what are your expectations from this book? Oh, I, I just, I want people to, you know, in the West there's this notion that Iran is kind of, you know, ruled by difficult guys and uh, therefore the whole country becomes sort of tainted in people's minds with, uh, I don't know, they're other, they're the enemy, they're whatever, this is how especially the Americans had characterized them for so long. Whereas in fact there's a whole country full of people who are not very happy with their rulers, don't want to live like that, don't want to live with, uh, with under a religious, um, doctrinaire religious totalitarian state. Um, and there's all this fabulous layers of culture. So I want people to sort of engage and think of the region differently, be able to find it on a map, be curious, go travel there, go, you know, pay attention and, and start to think of, have a more nuanced view of, uh, of the place, you know. Okay, thank you Naomi, it was great having you here. Wish you all the very best for you and your book. Thank you for tuning in to the Goa Arts and Literature Festival.